we are rolling. Okay. <laughs> how are you doing today, dear Joe? I'm okay. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Good. Um, it's been a busy weekend for me, but aside from that, I'm doing pretty good. Good. Yeah. It's been a humid one. It has been yeah. very humid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How are you? Man- how are you managing to stay stay healthy these days in this humidity? <laughs> I take my sea moss. You what? Take my sea moss. Sea moss. Yeah. You put it in like smoothies. I do. I uh-huh. put it in a little bit of everything. <laughs> you can put it in spaghetti sauce. I tricked the kids the other day. Really? Mm-hmm. And so what are the benefits of that? Well, there's so many benefits, but uh, generalized, it removes the mucus out of your body, which is a cause of all disease, from cancer, COVID, fibroids, anything like that. Mm. Um, it's an anti-inflammatory, which is the site of all disease, and it uh, reverses mineral deficiencies because it's so mineral sufficient. So when you put it inside of your body, it helps those mineral deficiencies. But if you place it on your skin, it also helps the mineral deficiencies in your skin. because That's our largest organ. So it helps remove eczema, psoriasis, dermatitis, anything like that. Whoa. How does it taste? Mm, the, I have two kinds. I have a golden and I have a purple. The golden doesn't taste like anything. Um, it has the applesauce texture. And the purple has, I kind of compare it to a beet. So it has like a ocean taste it doesn't taste like fish or salt it just tastes like the ocean Hmm. Mm -hmm. interesting yeah like seaweed kind of yeah that's kind of what it looks like i've heard that it looks like when i get it i get it in that's raw form and um i've heard people um say it looks like ramen noodles a lot healthier for you but (laughs) it looks like ramen noodles that's interesting yeah um now I want to get into what you what you do, okay. um, but let's talk a little bit about yourself first. Are you sure. from the Lansing area, born and raised? I am born and raised. I went to East Lansing kindergarten through twelfth grade. Oh, go Trojans! <laughs> <laughs> Just what is that? <laughs> <laughs> and you had mentioned you have kids. How old are your kids? I have a twenty eight year old. Whoa! Yeah, an eleven year old, and two grandkids. Wow! Yeah. Wow, so you're busy. I am. I started, I kind of bloomed late in life. Mm. Well, that's not a bad thing, right? I mean, a lot of people typically, at least like past generations, had their kids young. I had my kid young. I was 20, I mean, what would be considered young? I was 21 Yeah. when I had my daughter. Um, But I, it's, I see that like most people now are starting to have kids later in life. Yeah, Um. It's it's changed. I was 18. Yeah. I walked across the stage with her in my belly. Whoa. Yeah. They How did your parents feel about that? Um, <laughs> Mom was really happy that I decided to keep her. Oh. Um, I was shunned a lot by the parents at school. I know that there were other girls pregnant, but I was the one who decided to keep the baby. So wow. I wasn't, you didn't see, like now it's more of a common thing, but back then, way back then, <laughs> it, um, I was the only one. Wow, and I'm sure you don't regret that. Obviously. No, I don't. She saved my life. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, um, yeah. That's a definitely can be a game changer for a lot of people in the way they the direction that they go in life, whether Absolutely. or not they decide to keep a, a baby in, while they're in high school. Because I mean, those are like your most formative years. Yeah, I mean, you're still even trying to figure out who you are as a person. Yeah, yeah. it's hard. Uh, I commend anybody who can wait. You know. Yeah. To try to learn yourself first. Yeah. Instead of you're always growing with your child, but when you have them so young, you're still trying to navigate yeah. and you know teach them and navigate them as well. So. So what was life like after you had your your daughter? Obviously, you graduated high school. Did you go to college or? Nope, I um, didn't go to college until I was forty. Forty. Whoa. <laughs> I know. Wow. So um, after I had her, I went into school for criminal justice to be a corrections officer just because I wanted some good money. And I realized that I couldn't do that because it's 24-7, 365. Yeah. So I got into the medical field, and I was in the medical field for 15 years. For some reason, you keep cutting in and out. I saw that. Um, I don't know why. Maybe move the mic. (laughs) Move the mic slightly up or, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. (laughs) (laughs) So um, I went into the medical field and did administration for 15 years. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. And how was that? It was good. It was, I kind of miss it actually, but it was nine. I missed the hours. Let me say that. (laughs) 
uh, nine to five, Monday through Friday. Now being a business owner, I work 24, seven, 365. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So when did you decide, well, first off, what business do you own? I own Nature's 92. Okay. It is a wild crafted sea moss company. And what made you decide and when did you decide to open that up? Well, um, what happened was after I was uh, in the medical field, I was burnt out. It was just, I went in there to help people and it wasn't allowing me to do so. It definitely is a uh, money making machine and I wasn't being fulfilled anymore. So um, I needed to find something to do. I didn't know what to do with myself. I hadn't had a dream in so long. I was just busy being a parent. You know, just trying to make it day by day, pay rent and bills and stuff. So uh, after 15 years, I had just a little bit of time to figure my life out. So I decided to go back to LCC because I had that year of credits uh, Mm -hmm. for criminal justice and get my degree in criminal justice. So I um, got my bachelor's from Ferris State. Wow. Yeah, 43. In criminal justice? Yep. Wow. Uh Uh-huh. Well, congratulations. Thanks. <laughs> I pay for it, but I don't use it. <laughs> <laughs> As most people, when right. they go to college, they, they typically don't end up working in that field. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, now, what what exactly did you go to school for? Like, what, what did you want to do? Well, I thought that I wanted <clears throat> to be a juvenile probation officer. I was... A, Are you a strict person? Uh, no. I think that if you... Um, do what's right, you will kind of stay, you know, on the right side. Mm -hmm. You won't be in trouble. Yeah. Not always, but for the most part. But I was a bad kid. I was a naughty kid. I was in the the criminal justice system when I was a kid, and I aged out. The reason I aged out, because I had a daughter. Wow. So what did, what did you, what, what do you mean you were involved? I mean, I was just always naughty, running away. I don't, you know, fighting, Mm. doing stuff like that. So, um, I just, uh, was it because like the wrong crowds? I mean, I guess, you know, you kind of, when you're a teenager, you feel like, you know, everything. So, so I didn't, uh, I kind of did what I went. I was on probation. I didn't do anything, you know, that got me in some serious trouble, but thankfully, thankfully. Um, but, uh, I made, I aged out. I didn't have any, um, issues in the adult criminal court. So, that's awesome. I mean, because a lot of people in that situation tend to, it, it's like an endless cycle. They just kind of, once you're in that crowd and you're you're heading down the wrong path, like you, it has to get greater and greater each time. Uh, once you get into yeah. the criminal justice system, as a uh, defendant, you are going to be there for a while. Yeah. This episode is brought to you by Red Bike Delivery. This delivery service operates only using battery-powered, eco-friendly transportation. Red Bike Delivery is there for all your delivery needs, whether it's dinner for the family, flowers for your partner, or new house plants for your new collection. Red Bike Delivery will gladly deliver those and everything in between. So what are you waiting for? Check out Red Bike Delivery on Facebook or Instagram for more information. Red Bike Delivery, because there's only one Earth. Not a lifetime. Well, and the the system itself doesn't make it easy for those who who are in those positions where even if you wanted to get out, you almost have to revert back to what you know. That way you can just make ends meet. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I know that it's, that's what I decided to do. I've always had a passion for um, prisoners and prisoners' rights um, and the criminal justice system. Like I said, I studied it, so I knew the origin and uh, the ins and out of it. So I was really going to, I was looking to change it from the inside out. That's a good, that's a good way to do it. I mean, because if you're, if you're looking at it from the outside perspective, it's very difficult. It's a very like, it's a very like isolated, um, Mm -hmm. I guess, group of people or like infrastructure, very isolated. So well, it's only... so, so stereotypical. They feel like, you know, if you're in the system that you're a bad person and that's not always the case. Yeah. You know, so um, the criminal justice system is for the poor. It really and is. It, it really, truly is. Because um, if you look at things, uh, you can get out of trouble if you have the money. But the poor doesn't have the money. Yeah. They don't have a lawyer. 
they don't have um, the schooling to understand really what's going on. So, you know, they can't afford bail. I mean, one of the greatest examples of that in recent times is Jeffrey Epstein. Yeah. When, you know, he was a multi-billionaire who yeah. went to jail for uh, uh, sex trafficking and yeah. then was able to get work release during the day right. and, and only go back to all jail during during the night. Yeah, yeah all, all of them. them. Yeah. Just goes to show, like, how much money, you know, money really does matter. Yeah, so the criminal justice system is a system to keep you poor. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's very... Uh, I went... For school, I had to do an internship, so I did an internship, um, I don't know if I should say, (laughs) at a court system here. Okay. And um, I was sitting in a placement uh, hearing for, uh, it was a bunch of probation officers, and we were all talking about um, where to send this young girl. She had done everything. She had been everywhere that she could get some help, and they went through her story, and... um, I was kind of sitting off by myself because I'm the intern and I was bawling, crying. Wow. I was, I was, I was so torn up. I had the subs. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so I just look like a fool in there. I'm, I'm crying. Everybody's like looking at me. So I noticed in that moment that, and just like anything, you become hardened. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, I was just, I know that I would carry these children's stories with me. So I just couldn't just couldn't do it does it pay well that that field Would mm, it, it pays better than you know you always feel like you're going to get a degree and you're going to make all this money mm-hmm. and I don't know it was I just did it more for the passion yeah I know that I was going to make more than what I was making in the medical field wow mm-hmm. that yeah I couldn't imagine so in what ways would you want to change the system and w- what would you like to see different well, I would like a, a true uh, lawyer for people. Um, the public defenders are overworked, underpaid. Um, I would like some more education. The American system is so uh, fast, you know, because you have these rights and they, you have a time frame to have all these rights given to mm. you that they don't understand. Um, you're giving a... Um, Goodness, I can't remember the, the word. But you're giving a um, all these options to what to plea. And so you're giving a plea bargain. That's the word. Sorry, <laughs> I'm looking for. Um, you're giving a plea bargain, but uh, and it could be less than the charge that you're given. But you don't know the ramifications of having this. Now, if you really, truly didn't do it, and now you're taking a plea bargain, you're saying that you did it, and now it's on your on your, you know, on your record. Well, is a public defender really looking for your best interests or are they looking for the interests of court? They're <clears throat> giving you your liberty. Mm. They're there to move you through the system. You have the right to have a lawyer present. You can have a lawyer present that you met two minutes before you walked into the court. <sighs> they know you from, you know, the file that they have on you. Wow. That's insane. So that's really crazy. Well, you know, we also it's just the whole system. You you want your liberties given to you and to be expedited through the court. You don't want to sit there forever. Yeah. Um, but it also says that people that can't uh, afford bail, they usually end up in prison. You know, you can't get out and you can't resume your life. You can't make money for your family. You can't, you know, but also there are some people that do need to stay in jail. You yeah, know, yeah. so it's. um what are know. the percentage, I wonder what the percentages are of people who use public defenders as opposed to people who just hire a lawyer. A lot. A was, lot. Would, yeah. would you say it's greater? Absolutely. I mean, just like we said, you know, you have to be, you have to be financially stable mm, or, yeah. you know, people, you have families that take out, uh, you bail know, it's like a loan on, or, their, yeah, right. bail bonds that put their house up. Yeah. You know, yeah. like your parents put your house up so you're not in jail. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> have kids, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's um, I don't know. It's just a, it's a sad place to be. So, I decided um, I couldn't do that. After I paid all this money to go to school, that um, 
I just, I wanted to save all the kids. And seeing, Juveniles. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, seeing that during that time that um, this is what they've uh, experienced. This is what's in their home. This is maybe uh, something that, you know, the issues that have caused them to um, be in the system is generational. Yeah. It's just never been broken or it's never been taught another way or, um, you know, poverty creates a lot of criminal activity. It really does. Yeah. Thievery. I mean, it creates yeah. like all kinds of different things. Yeah. Abuse. Yeah. And yeah. Um, addiction. Alcohol. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah. All kinds of things. Yeah. So I, 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 I know that from experience because, um, my, my stepdad, uh, before we went into foster care, he was, I mean, I, I would assume that we were poor. I don't really know what our financial situation yeah, was, but, poor too, but I, but looking back, it was like, yeah. I could, you know, like we were poor. Mm-hmm. Um, but like he was, I would say middle class, but, uh, I guess middle class for the area. Um, it, it was West Palm beach. So everybody's oh, okay. kind of poor there unless you're rich. Right. Um, so he worked like a blue collar job, but the thing is like, he was always, like, I remember him breaking into somebody's house and stealing a stereo set. So like I grew up seeing those kind of things. Right. And then my, my brother who was on the podcast on the very first episode, like when he was young, he broke into a car. So it was like one of those things that yeah, like it was, was generational. It was generational and yeah. it was the environment that we are part of Yeah. that, that breeds that kind of behavior. Yeah. It's really sad. It is sad. And I mean, fortunately for me and him, like we were able to get out of that environment and then now we have a good life and we were, I wouldn't say had the best in like influence in life, but, um, we were taught like morals and standards and Absolutely. those kind of things. So like, obviously I know that like stealing is not good right? or robbing somebody's not good right? or addiction's bad. <laughs> right. <laughs> As you I know, have even, Boo sitting over yeah. there. <laughs> well, but you know that, um, even even in the situations where people are doing it, they know that it's bad. Yeah, that's true. They know that it's not a social social norm, but they but, have to survive. But they also surround themselves with people who are doing the same thing, and yeah, that and that's a whole that's all poverty. Yeah, that's all the community you you can't afford to leave. Right. You know, like uh, when people get out of prison, there's no place for them to go. So I really wanted yep. to do prisoners' rights and help them reintegrate into society and do all of that. So that's really where my passion I, was at. I think there's some groups that are doing that. Yeah, there are. Yeah. Do you work with any of them, or have um, you been a part of any of those? No, not yet. I've been immersed in CMOS, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've had a couple people on. Um, I've had, uh, oh, man, his name's slipping my mind. This, this guy was in prison for... Um, I think attempted murder and he went in as like a 16 year old kid didn't get out until he was in his forties. And now he's working for good time makes good sense. And it's a awesome. It's a, do you know what it is? No, but it makes sounds. So it's a program that advocates for prisoners who awesome. have good behavior mm-hmm. um, to have time taken off their sentence. Mm-hmm. And um, so, you know, like if they have decent behavior, then, then, you know, th- maybe they'll get out a year earlier, two years earlier. Um, I guess Michigan Michigan doesn't have that. Um, other states do. Yeah. But. I didn't know Michigan uh, didn't have that. Well, what he was saying was that, so like if in Michigan, um, if if your sentence, let's say five to, what does it be, like five to ten years mm-hmm. or something, you mm-hmm. serve the full ten. Right. You don't serve the five. Like they just say that. And then you might have to serve another year just for processing or whatever to get out. Yeah. I mean, and, and if you can stay out of trouble while you're in prison, prison is a totally different environment. Yes. Yeah. It's It's its a a different world. world. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think that the average person realizes that. I don't think so. Yeah. And, you know, obviously depends to what kind of prison you go to and, and where and, Hey, what you did. (laughs) Well, jail's the same way. You know, you're amongst people who have the same mindset usually as you. And so it can be a breeding ground. Mm. You, I I really was going into criminal justice um, with a holistic aspect, a holistic look at changing the mind, 
Because if you change your mind, it doesn't matter the environment that you're in. Yeah. You can be whoever you want to be. Yeah. You know, but you have to heal yourself. You really do. Yeah. And you have to take proactive steps in order yeah. to do it. Like you have to realize that you need, you need There's help. There's a lot of steps to healing. So, yeah. yeah. What made you so self-aware in that aspect? Well, um, I think that when I was, well, I know that when I was a child, um, I would see my, my mother was physically abused. And so I would see that. And then all that goes on with that. Yeah. Um, my father was incarcerated here and there throughout my whole life. And, um, so I saw that too. So I would go visit him and things of that nature. So I've always, and I knew my dad what, as a person, you know, not as a criminal per se. So, um, so I've always just had a real passion for helping people, the marginalized communities, some sort of way. So, uh, whether it be um, women trying to get out or um, people just trying to change their environment so they don't have to commit crime. So, yeah. Was there something in your life that happened to where you you realized that if you changed your mind, your mindset, that you could create a better life for yourself? Uh, like uh, like you, I was uh, raised in the church. Okay. So I, it was. What kind of church? Um, it was a Christian church. I wasn't <laughs> evangelical. Well, I th- when we didn't have all of the rules with that. I mean, okay. We had rules, but yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I, I always had a, like a moral standing. My mom always, um, had us in church. So I went to church this morning. Oh, yeah. okay. Mm-hmm. So you still, still go. Yeah, I do. I appreciate that at yeah. this point in my life. Yeah. That's important. Yeah. It's important if you feel that you need to go to church to go. I uh, I enjoy being around like minded people. Yeah, and worshiping. So yeah, that's very cool. It does feed my soul. Yeah, I I could imagine. Yeah. What uh, kind of church do you go to now? I go to the church with all the flags. I hope. Oh okay. Uh-huh. My sister got married there. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, last year, I think. Oh wow. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> so you've always kind of had like a holistic mindset. Yeah. A holistic view, a holistic way of kind of looking at things. And like, I, I honestly hate that term holistic. It, I think it's like kind of like woo woo in a yeah. sense, mm-hmm. but really it just means like, like natural in a right. sense. Everything like, has a label these days. I know. Yeah. I know. But holistic yeah. just seems like, I don't know, like it's attached to all these different things that are considered woo woo, like Reiki yeah. and yeah. all mm-hmm. this other stuff. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know if those things are real. <laughs> I've had I'm, Reiki done. I, I'm sure. I'm sure there's something about it that's real. I've never had it done. Yeah, there's so I a don't little know. bit of holistic for everybody. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so we were um, when I was a child. Uh, mom always raised us uh, in healing us through Melaleuca. We did a lot of Melaleuca. We did a lot of what is that? Uh, it's a company. They're still around. Uh, they were kind of like the. It was Melaleuca oil. It has this this scent, and so we would always have salves and you know, oils and stuff to heal us. So we're not uh, really big uh, pill people. Okay. So we'll always find something to heal. And um, I didn't pay a lot of attention to that until I went back to school. So when I went back to school, I was 40. I kind of had like a nervous breakdown. I was, you know, you're 40. You're supposed to have all your life together. (laughs) still trying to figure that out (laughs) but uh so I had I went back to school and I actually had time in my schedule because I worked for 15 years Monday through Friday so I had it in my schedule to um spend some time with myself and that you know being a young mother I didn't have time to do that so I started spending some time with myself and working out I had high cholesterol and I didn't want to take anything that the doctors were telling me that I needed to take. He kept telling me that I was um, getting worse and worse and getting closer to a stroke. So I looked online to see what I could figure out and I started taking CMOS. Whoa. Yeah. And your cholesterol levels dropped? Yeah. I lost a bunch of weight that I've gained back. <laughs> uh, but working. And I've got to find time again to work out. But, um, yeah, my cholesterol was uh, was good for, for, you know, while I was in school up till now. So, yeah. Okay. Yep. That's, a, that's amazing. Um, it really truly is. You know, yeah. people do think that, you know, there's something to it. 
I have days where I do samples for people to take three days to see if you can tell the difference. Because okay. I do believe in it. Yeah. I, I do believe that uh, there's things on earth that can heal us. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's supplements for a reason. There's vitamins yeah. for a reason. And to think that, like, you can't take a supplement to, to like, lower your cholesterol is kind of, right. I mean, it's kind of insane. Right. Whereas, like, you could take a, a man-made drug. Right. Which is also most of the time created from a plant. <laughs> right. True that. True that. There's a yeah. bunch of stuff added to it. So yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. That is, that is truly amazing though. Yeah. Um, and when did you decide to, to when was that they decided to take that? Well, um, how long ago? That was probably about, oh goodness, how old was it, 46, maybe about 10 years ago. Okay. So I took it while I was in school. I was working out in really great shape. Um, and I graduated. So when I graduated, um, all through school, I was trying to find a job. I just wanted to really just find like a desk job and kind of ride it out, <laughs> you know, just kind of do my time until I could get my pension. <laughs> so um, I couldn't find a job. So I decided to go through a temp service. Mm. And uh, at the age of 43, I got into the Treasury Department making minimum wage after I graduated. Oh and gosh. yeah, it was one of the lowest points of my life. I was having a really, I didn't have a car. I was starting from the bottom with everything. Um, so uh, COVID hit and I couldn't work from home, but I got some stimulus checks. And the first stimulus, I bought a pound of sea moss because I didn't want to pay for the shipping. Mm. I made some, made some gel. I didn't know who to give it to. Nobody really knew what it was. A girlfriend of mine, um, we were kind of in, in the kitchen, and I said, what, I don't, what can I add to this? And so I got some organic uh, ingredients that I had, added it to the sea moss, and I told her to put it on her skin. She put it on her skin, and about a week, two weeks later, she came back and she said her husband noticed a change in her skin. And so what I was what like, kind of changes? Like, uh, I believe she had rosacea. But you also, when you put it on your skin, it gives you this, um, it has great beauty results. So you have this, literally have this glow on your skin. Wow. Yeah, it's amazing. It really, truly is. Putting it on my, on your skin is my favorite benefit. Um, and so one night, I had a glass of wine. I said, okay, you can do this. <laughs> so I got on Facebook. I made a post of, like, the sea moss on my face and then versus you know, wiped off and before and after. And a girlfriend of mine found, um, found that post and she works for leap and she suggested I got into a all for all in one program. And so that was just 2020. Wow. Yeah. So I'm still trying to figure (laughs) my life out. So, so when you decided to start a business, obviously it was in 2020, it was during the height of the pandemic. Yeah. Um, what was that like? Was it difficult to try to navigate? Were you just it was really were you, easy? Were you all in? Yeah, it was really easy because things were weren't because um, I was I was doing pop ups at the time, so um, you know everything was shut down. So mm-hmm. all the regulatory things, I I wasn't doing, so I didn't start doing that until I got. Um, into the Middle Village Micro Market downtown. Um, okay. Uh, so I'm in there, and um, what came. what is that place exactly? That place is yeah. a uh, cohort. It is okay. a um, space with seven different vendors there. So we're there for about a year. Okay. They had one before for the Christmas season, October to February. And um, all of those businesses, well, three of the businesses that were there have moved out on uh, Washington Square. Oh, so, wow. Yep. So Sweet Encounters is in the Naps building. Okay. It's an awesome bakery. We've got Capital Hippie, who is um, right in the 100 block across the street from us. So we're right next to Cupies, and she's right across the street. So you have a storefront? Yes, I do. Wow. <laughs> all this happened in... in Two years? What what year is it? Yeah, two years. Wow. Yeah, so I'm, like I said, I'm still trying to figure my life out. <laughs> so, uh, so I did like I did all the product part, and so now I'm you know 
kind of fine tuning all the paperwork and all of that. But I, it took me six months to become licensed. It was really hard. I know that there's uh, some people that sell CMOS, but um, when I went through MDARD, he told me that I was the first one to be licensed in the Michigan area. What exactly do you have to be licensed for? Well, you have to be licensed to work in a commercial kitchen. So okay. I work in a commercial kitchen along with a lot of the local uh, foodies here. Mm. I'm at Allen Street. And oh, so, okay. yeah, so you have to be licensed to, you know, work out of there. You also have to, labeling is... I don't, people don't pay attention to what's on your, whatever food, all the labels and all of the things that have to be on the label. So you go through labeling um, classes and trying to figure that out. But I had to have my CMOS tested for heavy metals. And since uh, MDARD wasn't familiar with CMOS, I was kind of the first one. So it took quite a while. So how does CMOS grow? It grows attached to the rocks uh, in warmer climate oceans. And uh, once it grows attached to the rocks, the ocean moves it. And so it pulls off the minerals out of the rock. So if you pull the sea moss off of the rock and you eat the sea moss, you're getting the minerals that it's collected from the rock. So is that the best way to ingest it or does it have to go through a process of being cleaned? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. When, when, when it's harvested, now there's different, there's fake sea moss. So if I sell wild crafted sea moss, which means it grows in the wild and it's harvested um, by the natives there, I get St. Lucia okay. sea moss. So they kind of pull it out of the ocean and just dry it. It's just an herb. Yeah. It's just uh, some sea ramen noodles. <laughs> 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 and they just kind of, you know, they let it dry and then I get it and it's just a dry herb. And then I rehydrate it, blend it, make a gel. So... In what, in, in what consistencies do you sell it, or how do you? Sure. What do you put it in? Well, I sell um, the dry moss for people to try out making the moss themselves. Um, I make a gel out of it, so I sell the gel as well, sixteen ounces. And the gel you like put on your skin? You can put on your skin. I don't mix anything with it. Some people do mix other herbs with it, but okay. I don't because I want you to put it in the bath. Um, mm. You know, give your neighbor some if, you know, they're curious. I want you to try every way. I want you to put it in your hair to put the minerals back in your hair. I want you to put on your skin. I want you to, you know, put it on your child after they have a sunburn. So it works for that. Yeah. I just got sunburned. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, so the gel you can put on your skin or you can eat. You take two tablespoons and you put in whatever you like. Okay. I put in some spaghetti sauce the other day. The kids didn't know. <laughs> It's just like a thickening agent. I can't taste it. So I said that the other day and my daughter didn't know. She was like, you put it in spaghetti sauce. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So, or I have a lot of guys who take it. They put it in an applesauce cup mm. yep, and that's easy for the kids. So I sell it in a, um, the gel, like I said, and then I put it in a smoothie. Those are my best sellers. So I make those ahead of time. I freeze them and then you come in and you purchase whichever flavors you like. You freeze them, take them out of your freezer, stick the straw, and you've got your daily dose of sea moss. Wow. Yeah. Or I oh. put them in a, like a, f a freeze pop. Okay. And I call them uh, sea sickles. <laughs> and the sea sickles are good for the kids. Kids love them. So it's, it's safe for children and pregnant women. So um, it helps keep the babies, their immunity up. So Interesting. And does it help? It obviously helps with immunity for yeah. everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Huh. And when I had COVID, I, I know that it helped me because it releases the mucus and the mucus gets like stuck in there. A little hardened. Oh, okay. so, yeah. Huh. You know, it's kind of amazing. And so amazing. you obviously sell it in a kitchen, but do you have like a storefront where you yeah. sell the products mm -hmm. too? So I have, um, I have to make it in a kitchen. Okay. So I make it in the kitchen and then I sell it downtown at the Middle Village Micro Market. Oh, okay. Yep. And some you'll see me around town at pop ups and stuff. Um, I was just at Lansing Alive, oh. um, in Rotary Park. Yeah, I wanted to go to that. Yeah, it was, it was nice. It was so humid. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. was. We were underneath the bridge, but it was still humid. So. <laughs> was there a lot of people there? Yeah, there were. Um, it was nice because they had Dam Jam, which was an old town. Yeah, right up the street. Yeah, and you know the thing is, is that 
we can't figure out. People are always like, I didn't hear about it. So I can't figure out how to get the word out for all of these events. You know, yeah. if we post them on Facebook, somebody has to see it. So I don't know. Yeah. I, I haven't figured that out. I mean, you kind of have to be like in the community realm. Yeah, like you sure. have to be on the 517 page yeah. and you'll see them. I yeah. see them all the time. Yeah. Um, or you have to actively go look for them. Yeah. I didn't. That's the thing. Before I started doing this podcast, I didn't know anything about the community at all. Yeah. There's a lot that goes on in the community and you know, me neither. Yeah. So when I, um, there's a huge entrepreneurial community here. Huge. Yeah. I've talked to a lot of them. Yeah. <laughs> you have, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I didn't know that either. Yeah. You know, um, but yeah, there's, there's a community here. There's it, things happening in Lansing. Yeah. yeah. That's one thing I like about, I've talked a, about, about it a lot on the podcast with a lot of entrepreneurs and artists is that everybody is supportive of everybody. Yeah. Like like if you go to a pop-up people are like, Hey, come check out this person's stuff. Like mm-hmm. this person has great stuff or they'll promote you on social media, which is pretty cool. Yeah. We are, um, uh, pretty much a, a good community that helps each other out. Yeah. 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 I heard your red bike, uh, commercial too. Oh, uh, yeah. on the podcast. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, yeah. I just saw Jeremy, uh, yesterday. No, Friday. Yeah, I like Jeremy. Yeah, me too. He's, he's a been, good guy. He's been on like four times. Okay. <laughs> I think he told me, yeah. He's like one of the biggest show regulars. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He's, a good, he's a good guy. He's a good guy. And it was extremely traumatic what happened to him and his bike recently. Man. But he ended up on top. Didn't he? Yeah. I told him he would. I knew he would. Yeah. <laughs> the community loves him. It's awesome oh, yeah. to see yeah. um, someone that can do what the big companies do. So. Oh, absolutely. And, and make a living doing yeah. it. Yeah. Like, I mean... Starting off as like a small person, like you're a small fish in a big sea. That's, yeah. I mean, you know. Yeah, it's a bit yeah. overwhelming. <laughs> yeah, I could imagine. Yeah. Do you have any competition like with big companies or big corporations? Uh, yeah, there's uh, the big thing that I've noticed through this is that um, I know that there's um, some people in Grand Rapids that are licensed, but not everybody's licensed. Yeah, I believe the big majority um, of people aren't licensed, so... And, and if you're not licensed, you can't make it in a kitchen. Correct. If you are in a commercial kitchen, you have to be insured. So I have insurance. I'm in a commercial kitchen. So are there people doing it without being licensed? Yeah. I mean, that happens with everything. Everything you can get bootlegged. <laughs> you know? I mean, I don't want to knock anybody's hustle, but, you know, I, yeah. I did what I had to do. And it, it was it was really hard. It was a really hard six months. I went without... Uh, really making any money mm. so yeah that's difficult yeah that's it was very, really really hard I could imagine mm-hmm. and that's I think that's the one thing that scares most people who want to be entrepreneurs especially something like that where you have this dream and you know that you can get there but it takes these six months of not getting paid yeah but you know you have kids you have a house you have a mortgage you have a car payment whatever it is you have these bills and that's kind of the, that's kind of the weight holding you down yeah adulting adulting yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's life <laughs> yeah yeah and it doesn't stop but the only way you can get to that dream is by like giving yeah. it giving it six months and just diving all like all in yeah i do believe um i live with uh the knowledge that all purpose has pain all pain has purpose all pain has purpose <laughs> so <laughs> all purpose does have pain usually but i was gonna say it goes yes, both ways yes, yeah <laughs> true 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 so um I knew I would get out on the other side. It just took longer than I thought. But um, I was in the Middle Village micro market for about a month before I got licensed. Oh, wow. Yeah. So now it's just trying to get the information out. I'm going to still try to get out to the bigger uh, farmers markets and stuff like that. But Like which one's the like Meridian Township? Yeah. yeah. That's a really good one. Yeah. yeah. I've uh, talked to a couple people out there, but I still need to get out there. Okay. Yeah, that's that's awesome. That is truly awesome that you, that you've managed to take it from just making it in your house and, and po- posting on social media to having a kitchen and a storefront. And I mean, it, it's only going to go up from there. I hope so. It will. It if is, you work hard is, enough. Yeah. It's, um, it's hard enough. <laughs> it's hard enough. It's just, a, it's a lot having your own business, but I do. Um, this is something I've always wanted to do. I always wanted my own business. I looked at a couple uh, other avenues and like the CMOS just kind of fell into my lap. So, yeah. Do you think you'll make anything else other than uh, products with CMOS? 
Um, I don't know. When I when I first went into this, I really wanted to. When I would sell at uh, pop ups, I wanted to be in marginalized communities that weren't uh, aware of other options to heal outside of what your primary care doctor gave you. So, I'm constantly teaching people about CMOS. Do you get a push? Do you get a bunch of pushback? From people? Um, I've been called a snake oil salesman oh, before. <laughs> yeah. I was like, girl, come get some of this CMOS. But um, yeah, this, I already know that it works. So, yeah. you know, anybody saying anything to me is really just whatever. Is there scientific evidence that it does work? Now, you know <laughs> that um, anything that's um, holistic, is that word again? Yeah. Is uh, or supplemental. Yeah. They've rebranded all natural medicine to be supplemental or herbal or anything like that. Right. And, and pharmaceuticals not... are medicine. Right. So right. you kind of just have to change your mindset about that. Yeah. But are, are there any like independent studies on I the effects of it? Um, You know, what happened, how it came about was in the 1800s, in Ireland, there was a potato famine, a potato famine. Yeah. And um, the sea moss would wash up on the shore and they would eat it. And so it sustained them through the famine. And then it turned into a poor man's food and kind of went away. Mm. There's a black Honduras um, herbalist. His name was Dr. Sebi. Honduran? Honduran. I'm Honduran. Oh, uh-huh. Yeah. Well, check him out. His name is Dr. Sebi, S-E-B-I. Okay. And um, he uh, ended up, we believe that he was killed, but anyways, he passed away and he taught about an alkaline diet. He talked about um, herbs that you should use in your body and C- Irish sea moss is one of them. Hmm. So that's kind of yeah. how, you know how it really came about and how we first saw it was when Left Eye from TLC like checked out and she went over to Honduras and she was healing and fasting and doing all these things and she ended up dying out there, I believe. I think she had a car accident out there. Oh, wow. Yeah. So um, she talked about it openly and that's kind of where, you know, it kind of came to the States. I mean, I'm sure it was here before, but then, you know, it was kind of mainstream. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, there's a lot of things that are like that, that aren't approved by the FDA yeah. or they don't want approved because it will affect the pharmaceutical companies. Absolutely. Like MDMA and, um, yeah, yeah all those different drugs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I have heard <clears throat> that they are trying to regulate, uh, they'll try to regulate supplements here in a moment. The food, that's one thing that I really want people to know is that care about your health before it is an issue. If you take care of yourself before you are sickly, you can maintain your immunity. Yeah. So when I talk about immunity, we're talking about your lymphatic system that runs through your whole entire body. That's your garbage dump system in your body, and it moves everything about. So if it's stagnant, then you're sick. So I also, at my shop, I'll uh, have different things that will help with uh, your immunity. So I really push dry brushing, which is uh, manually with a dry brush on your skin, moving your lymphatic system. Um, A gua or a jade roller to move the lymphatic system in your face. So anything just to keep uh, that moving will keep you healthy. Now... Would like using a Theragun, something like that, be helpful too? You know, I was thinking that the other day because I have one. Me too. Those are so awesome. <laughs> I, love I mean, that. <laughs> <laughs> so I wonder. I I was thinking about that the other day. It's got to. Yeah. You know, if you move it, you're always going to brush towards your heart or move towards your heart. So here, towards your heart. Well, I mean, the whole idea yeah, of, of the Theragun yeah. or like any massage gun like that mm-hmm. is to help break up the lactic acid in yeah, your body. Right. Mm-hmm. So if you break that up, then blood flow can or blood can flow better. Yeah. I would imagine that that would be helpful. Yeah, I'm sure too. there's tons of things that you can do. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll have to try that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah, that's um, I just a lot of people don't know that, you know, they feel like when you have allergies, you need to take an allergy med, but you can take some local honey and that will help you. Mm. You know, I also sell organic elderberry syrup and it has local honey. 
for allergy sufferers as well. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And I also want uh, parents to know that they can take care of their children outside of pharmaceuticals, you know, and to what, keep them in healthy. what ways? Well, CMOS can be given to children as well. Yeah. So can elderberry syrup. So if you just have them, you take uh, two tablespoons of CMOS every day. You have your multivitamin. It's got all the minerals in there that you need. So if you give that to your babies, you know, especially when they start back at school. Yeah. Oh, Everybody's yeah. Everybody's all germy and boogery. I know. This year, <clears throat> this past year, the beginning of the year, like the whole, I would say, first six months of school, we got sick so so many times. Like yeah. I've never gotten sick so much in my life. And I have like a good immune system generally. Mm -hmm. um, but I think with going back after COVID, like being home yeah. from COVID, everybody was sick with so many different things. Yeah. And uh, especially with having to wear a mask because like you're not spreading the germs as much. And so breathing them all back in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then things, <laughs> things develop even stronger. And we were like, my son was sick for like, I think it was like eight weeks. Oh, goodness. And it was like each time it was like two weeks. Um, each time it was every two weeks. It was something different. Like he had like mm -hmm. rhinovirus one time right. and like some other stuff. And, and we give him vitamins and we try to boost his immune system, but didn't seem to didn't help. help. Yeah. Yeah. Those kids are, you know, they're germ magnets. Absolutely. So now they've got the kids uh, are disgusting. Yeah, they really are. <laughs> <laughs> we should get rid of them. No, <laughs> but um, yeah, that was. Um, I make sure that my daughter takes her. It's really important that, especially here in Michigan, that all people take vitamin D. Yeah, vitamin D three. I take it every day. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So does my daughter. What is the dosage that you take? Oh God. I, I, I think I take ten thousand I, I, I use or mm -hmm. something a day. Yeah, I take a little bit less than that because I think when it gets that high, you don't take it every day. And for my brain, mm. I need to take it every day. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, I take quite a few pills every day. <laughs> I do. So, All the supplements that I sell, I take. So on top of the sea moss, you still take regular vitamins? Yeah, I take uh, chlorilla, um, dandelion, burdock, bladderwrack, zinc, Zinc, everybody should be taking as well. If you don't take anything else, you should be taking vitamin D3 and zinc. Yeah. Well, vitamin D3 was one of the big things that helped boost your immune system from COVID. Yeah. And zinc yeah. too. COVID yeah. doesn't like zinc. So. Right. Yeah. So the kids, uh, I make sure my daughter has a teen vitamin. She takes another supplement for vitamin D. I have to force her to take CMOS. <laughs> She'll put it in a smoothie. Now she's old enough to make her own smoothies, but yeah. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, have they noticed a difference, your kids, in, in the way they feel or their immune system or anything like that since they started taking CMOS? No, my children, I have to force it on. My eldest, she's got uh, two babies in. I've had her uh, place it on their skin because they have eczema, so that's mm -hmm. helped them. But they're really snotty, really yeah. uh, filled with mucus as well, so that helps them with that. So with a baby, they just apply it on the skin and it yeah, helps with she's, that. she's not a baby. Everybody's a baby to me, but she's, um, <laughs> she's two. Oh, but yeah, you, you put, yeah, what you, it, it is a baby, <laughs> but you're going to put it on your skin, let it dry and just rinse it off like a mask. Or you can even put it in the bath water. What other kind of things does sea moss help with other than like the immune system and like some blemishes on the skin, things like of yeah, that well, nature? It helps literally with everything because like I said, it's everything is caused from mucus. So high blood pressure, high cholesterol, your, um, that mucus has formed and created a narrow pathway for your um, heartbeat, for the blood flow, for everything to move, you know, your cholesterol, everything. Yeah. So if everything's blocked because it has a narrow passageway, you need to remove that. So it literally helps with everything. So do you think it would help with like, like, like acne and uh -huh. things of that nature too. Yeah, so acne, know that, you know, um, when you have something come through the skin, it's something in your gut. So unless it's like a sunburn, you're yeah. getting it from external, but usually if it's coming through your skin, eczema, psoriasis, acne, you need to clean your gut. Yeah. So your gut is one of your brains. Yeah. So, and that's really important that you keep that clear. Yeah. That's one thing I, I've been like recently, it's weird. And I think it has to do with my diet. I obviously, I know, I know that it has to do with my diet and then a lack of exercise also. But, um, 
I, I keep breaking out in this spot right here. And I'm like, why? Now, everything, if you can, when you leave me, there is look up a face mask, a face mapping. So every place on your skin means something. Hmm. So here, I, I, I'm, don't give me a lion, but it, if you have uh, acne in your cheeks, it means something. In your T-zone, uh, on your chin, it all means something. So there's an imba- I know it's really cool. The body will tell you what's going on yeah. if you listen. Yeah. So you just have to really listen. I had a girl on uh, a while ago. Um, her name's I think Jessica, and she had cancer in in one of her breasts. And she was saying that um, that cancer, depending on the type of stress that you've endured, depends on where you get cancer in your body. Absolutely, absolutely. Even pain. Yeah. You have pain in your body. It means, you know, something else. Trauma is stored in different areas of your body. Your body is amazing. It really is. Yeah. I, when I was in high school, I talk about it in the, in my first episode or my episode. Um, but I was living in this extreme, um, extreme environment where it was just, it was so stressful. And I ended up removing myself from this environment a couple months in, but um, I, I had these bald spots in the back of my head that oh, were goodness. that developed from stress. Yeah. And then as soon as I moved out within like two months, my hair grew back. Oh, wow. Yeah. It was amazing. I'm like, I didn't think I'd ever get my hair back. Oh, goodness. Yeah. yeah. Stress does is a silent killer. Yeah. And you know what? I didn't realize that until I started my own business. <laughs> <laughs> so do you think yeah. there would be a good way for you to have like a good workflow balance to where you can work, work? Like work out, get your daily self care in, and then also balance being an a entrepreneur. I'm trying. Yeah, yeah. It was easier when. Um, right now, I'm trying to navigate the new world post COVID. Oh yeah. Because I started, you know, when things were quiet and there weren't a lot of people in the streets. I love that you say new world. Yeah, <laughs> it was a restart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't get me started on that one. But yeah. So, um, but yeah. So everything is. Uh, different so I'm still trying to figure it all out I was um and I still am really concerned that I take the time out for my family that's really important for me so so what does a typical typical work day flow um family balance look like for you well I'm a mom till 11 o'clock in the morning these days and then I head into the middle village and I'm there Tuesday through Saturday 11 to 7 and so I try to keep my work at work as much as I can. Yeah. But she's 11 and she's too cool for me. So <laughs> I get to work a little bit at home because so, she's in her room or something, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's one thing like a balance is is so healthy. And that's one thing recently that I'm like, I need a balance because yeah. I'm I'm one of those person people, persons, I'm one of those people that I'm all in or nothing. For the yeah. most part, mm-hmm. but I need to learn to have that balance to kind of manage like this podcast and working and family and like my workout schedule, because that's one thing that suffered is my workout schedule. Me too. <laughs> but and tomorrow I'm going to start. I'm going to start too. Okay. Me too. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> yes. Me too. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to, I also need it for a stress relief. Yes. You know, I, it, I loved working out. That was the first time uh, when I started school that I was actually working out on a regular schedule and it is the most amazing feeling yeah yeah so i can't wait to get i need it absolutely especially when you're dealing with so much stress like running a business yeah for sure yeah it's stressful yeah it's really stressful somehow i'm gonna fit it in and but i'm gonna do it (laughs) it's needed it's absolutely needed absolutely now do you have a, a website or anything i do it's uh nature's 92 lc why did you come up? Why did you come up with that name? Okay, nature's ninety two because it's uh, nature's, but ninety two comes from um, the mineral content. They say that it has ninety two of the hundred and two minerals that you have in your body. Oh, so yeah, cool. Mm-hmm. That's really cool. That's pretty thought out too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it took it took me a while, but um, I figured it out. There's all kinds of uh, different names out there, but. Awesome. Um, is there anything else you want to mention on the podcast about the business or? Uh, yeah, come see me. Come see me down at uh, Middle Village downtown. Free parking Fridays. I know a lot of people don't like the parking, so 
all day Friday. You can park for free. Wasn't it free during the summertime too? Uh, they'd have like uh, like around holidays and stuff. Okay. But yeah, so they've just made it because, you know, a lot of people didn't like the parking. So yeah. they do free parking Fridays. And we're there um, Tuesday through Saturday, 11 to 7. And you guys will see a different downtown by this time next year. There's a lot of things going on down there. Yeah, like what? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Washington Square will be, there'll be all new businesses down there. I know that Veg Head is coming. Mm. Um, it's like a vegan restaurant, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I know. Oh God, don't give me the line. I know that there's, I can't remember their name. I'm so sorry. Uh, <laughs> there's a plant, plant company. God, what is her name? They're moving in the old popcorn space. Is it uh Hillary Coleman? What's it starts with a V. I can never. No. Um, so she's, they're moving into, and the space, you know, that they've talked to us about, I don't get, let me start talking about the business, but it's uh, going to be a really cool space. Um, you know, they're going to have the live uh, music venue down there in the old hookah lounge. Mm. Um, I know that uh, there's some things coming to the Nat building. They're really work at, working at uh, changing the hours down there and having it be a destination uh, outside of the state workers. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and th- that's one thing I Jeremy and I talked about on the podcast was that Lansing is, it's such a weird place because they're like, it's a downtown and it's the capital city. You should be able to go down there in the evenings yeah. on like a Friday night and things yeah. be open. open. Yeah. yeah, well, you know, they cater to the state workers. Right. So usually still to this day, most of the restaurants down there um, close at three o'clock. Really? So Grand Traverse just came back. I think what they need to do is see the change before they decide to to move. Yeah. Because they made enough money when everybody was down here and they just were open breakfast and lunch. Right. You know, if you could yeah. only had to work breakfast and lunch Monday through Friday, <laughs> you do that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, we definitely need a change because we, we definitely need like a nightlife in downtown Lansing. Yeah. Whether it's like a comedy club or bars. I mean, there are bars, but. Like we need yeah, them. on the Washington Square, there's there's not so much uh, bars there, no. but they are going to put the live music there. And what I did read a while ago that they're going to open like a kind of like a Wharton Center in the oh in yeah. This, yeah yeah in that space down where the old Lake Trust was at. Okay, kind of like a civic center like they used to have back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like a performing arts. Yeah, center. yeah, yeah, yeah. So they'll, they'll, they're trying to get it together. Yeah. Well, you know, one thing at a time. Yeah. Slowly but surely. Yeah. And it's important. It's important for the community. It's important for entrepreneurs like yourself, people who want to open a business and don't know where to put it. But like downtown is such a prime location for any business. Yeah. Typically. Yeah. You know, um, the locals here have been so programmed that there's really nothing down there. Yeah. So trying to yeah. change everybody's thought process is, uh, yeah. It's a mindset. Something else. Yeah. And uh, we are having a pop-up on Saturday, the 23rd. Oh, where at? Yeah, right downtown on uh, the 1100 block. Okay. So there'll be all type of makers. Oh. So we just kind of put a word out on the street and people signed up to come sell their goods. So everybody will be down there the 23rd, 11 to 4. Oh, yeah. cool. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Well, everybody go out and check her out and uh, buy some sea moss. Sea moss, right? I said yeah, that right. Yeah, Okay, yeah. yeah. I'd like to get some. I'll bring you some. Okay, cool. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, I might. You'll love it. I might uh, swing by down uh, middle middle village. Sure. Cool. Well, thank you. Thank you for doing this. This you're was welcome. fun. Is there anything else? No, thank you. No? I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you're welcome back anytime. Thanks. I could tell that you warmed up towards the end. Like, you feel comfortable. A little bit. At first, you were kind of quiet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty cool hearing yourself. It it is yeah yeah most of the time people are like I don't like hearing my voice but it, you get used to it I just don't like to see myself on camera <laughs> I can deal with my voice okay that's funny um all right so um yeah go see her your website again is nature's ninety two l c at gmail awesome all right awesome well thank you for doing this. <laughs> <laughs>